Hey, this is John O's World, conversation for everybody. American Indian Religious Freedom Act uh, took place in 78, 78. Uh, literally 10 years before I was born. Okay. Um, so to answer your question, uh, I think that the uh, my family members in my generation really have assimilated well at this point because my grandmother was, um, she was in a, in a Dean boarding school in the state of Oklahoma. And, um, so what is she had, so what's just, an Indian boarding school? Yep. Because okay. imagine, you know, you're Joe Smo from Joe Smoville yeah. and you, you don't really, you've heard of an Indian boarding school, but you only know the European version of the Indian boarding school. So what is, what is the actual, like, was well, Indian boarding school? <laughs> so um, I I will say that I'm not like super well versed. I mean, I, I because I, I, because it's something that is you know when something's so common to you and you're told the same story over and over and over again, it's like almost difficult to to explain to other people. So um, Indian boarding schools in the United States were created in the 1800s. And uh, like the later part of the 1800s, and yeah. it came from a man, I can't remember his first name, last name Carlisle, where he uh, had the mantra of killing the Indian, but saving the man. So, uh, and you can look it up, that is very well documented that he said it over and over and over again. So the idea of Indian yeah. boarding schools was to uh, force assimilation onto indigenous populations. And they ranged from Canada throughout all of the United States territory. Gotcha. And in, in these, um, these boarding schools, um, I re- I, you know, some of the language I heard, you know, back from that guy was a little bit more severe than just saying Indian. Um, yeah. um, so, but, um, in these schools, like, they have found out back at a lot of these places, just mass graves. Yeah. Um, and those are still being uncovered today. If you do a quick Google search, if you're a competent Googler, um, you can see, especially with the Catholic church, there's a, there's quite a bit of damage there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so your family, you know, successfully lived through that. Um, but how did that impact y'all's culture? Um, it impacted it in a lot of ways, like probably even some that I wouldn't really be able to mention just because <clears throat> unless you'd study like a uh, family over time, it would be difficult to see the impact. But my grandmother was six years old when she was taken from her home and forced into an Indian boarding school in Oklahoma. Uh, she did speak English, but she wasn't a few fu- affluent English speaker. Comanche was her first language. And so, um, because of that, you know, this is our grandmother, right? This is my grandmother. Okay. She's so still, we're not she talk- is still alive. Okay. So we're not talking about ni- the 1890s. We're not no. talking about the, the great plane. This is your grandma. Like, yeah, this is, my grandma. This like is I I'm called her over- yesterday. All right. Just, I'm trying to give, you know, like how recent this actually is. So yeah. she was, her first language, she lived in the United, you know, she lived here. Um, her first language was not English and she was right. ripped from her home at six years old and forced mm-hmm. into this school yeah. to have the indigenous part of her wiped killed. out. Yeah. Okay. She, um, she, in fact, was the only student that was, or captive, rather, uh, that was at Fort Sill Indian School at the time uh, for two months. So she was in her <coughs> housing alone for two months by herself as a six-year-old. Now, my daughter is seven, Jesus. and I cannot imagine her being alone for any period of time, Not not because she would do anything bad, but because... She would be terrified and she wasn't allowed to speak her language. They cut off her hair. Uh, they 
bathed Jesus. her with like like steel wool mm. basically um and the the idea was that all natives were filthy and they had they all had lice and you know all these stupid stereotypes and so every Leprosy, kid that came lice, in yeah babies. every kid that came in went through this like chemical bath with with basically the equivalent of still wool jesus that's uh and this is you know, she's six so what is this the, the 50s the 40s yeah yeah jeez now i how long was she in that school like uh from the ages of six to 14 14 i think um yeah. and then she dropped out she dropped out of of high school and got married and um then had a bunch of babies and um you know she kind of went on with her life and she she did end up getting her ged and then later got her bachelor's degree and her master's degree and um wow. she headed our um our tribal higher education office for a little bit and so she's done a lot of really great things and and uh but that is all um thanks to self determination and resiliency and so you know overcoming not, yeah not i'm not gonna my, be yeah 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 absolutely like someone tried to wash the redhead off of me it's not what happened yeah no <laughs> it's just like Thanks. Hey, this is Jono's World, conversation for everybody.